Okay, ladies and gentlemen, please be seated for the reports. Um, we'll have uh, three, three reports from the, from the workshops. Um, uh, as a short introduction, who am I? I'm Erki Pöytäniemi from uh, Organic Food Finland. And I won't use more time to introduce myself except for you to know that I'm the father of the young lady on the cover of the vision. So, so um, that's my position today. And um, we'll go directly to the, to the uh, reports because we don't have a lot of time. And um, we will uh, start from, uh, uh, in reverse order from the third workshop. Um, which was about the role of organic farming in global food and nutrition security. And the rapporteur is Lise Andreasen. She is the international coordinator of uh, the International Center for Research in Organic Food Systems. And uh, she is also very much active uh, outside Europe with uh, more than 10 years experience in projects in Africa, Asia and Europe. So, welcome Lisa and uh, please, uh, five minutes um, and I'll stop you after that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, somebody must think that women are good listeners since all of us rapporteurs are women. Uh, anyway, thank you very much. Um, I have the pleasure to report from uh, workshop number three, which was on the role of organic farming in global food and nutrition security. Uh, in that workshop, we had three presentations. Um, and uh, each, each presenting from different points of view. And if I could have the next slide, please. Do I do that here? How do I change? Yeah, somebody does. Um, uh, the three presentations took, us, took different starting points. Um, one of the presentations was um, uh, on how this uh, joint programming initiative on agriculture, food security and uh, climate change uh, look, up, look into food security and climate change and how uh, organic farming fits into it. Um, they have a strategic research agenda uh, where uh, all this is lined out, and that was the starting point for that presentation. Another presentation was more directly on the topic, the role of research in global food and nutrition security. That's also the title of um, a paper from, um, from the Expo 2015 EU Scientific Committee. Uh, the third presentation was on uh, the contribution of organic uh, food and farming to global food and nutrition security in the context of climate change mitigation and adaptation. And that was given uh, on the basis of evidence from research in organic agriculture. Um, some of the main conclusions uh, that we came up with or that came about, it's, um, uh, it's not always easy to say that this is a common conclusion, but some of the ones that I think was, came across all of the three uh, presentations was that agriculture is affected and affects global environmental change also, that we need to do things differently. Um, and thirdly, that we do need research, which I'm very happy to see, because I come from a research organization. Um, also, it was obvious that the focus had become broader. We're not talking about food security now, it's we're talking about food and nutrition security and food systems. That was a common trend in, in all three presentations. Uh, so, concluding that research um, has become more complex and, and more challenging. Uh, in terms of the role of organic agriculture, um, I think there was also a, a sort of a joint uh, uh, agreement that organic agriculture is important to include in research for global food and nutrition security, um, expressed in different ways by the different presenters. Um, one viewpoint was that organic agriculture has a lot to offer, but is not the solution to everything. Um, another presenter presented it as uh, organic agriculture has more strengths and opportunities than weaknesses and, and, and threats in this context. Um, also, it was expressed that organic agriculture, well, has challenges and, and need further research. Uh, so putting it differently, that might not at this stage be able to solve everything. Other conclusions 
um, that um, sort of came across and was stated by some of the presenters in, and in the discussions and in the response to discussions were that um, the, the strength of the organic agriculture specifically relates to ecosystem services, including everything with soil, biodiversity, um, and socioeconomics as well was, was highlighted. Um, some of the weaknesses were the, the yields, the productivity, and also uh, the stability of production because it relates to weather conditions and very much also the performance of farmers. Um, another interesting or challenge of organic agriculture is that it's not sufficiently regionalized um, that uh, the potential of organic agriculture can only be really uh, exploited if you look upon the, the local conditions. And therefore also the potentials have not been sufficiently researched. Um, another highlight was that looking into the more complexity that is coming into research in, in, in uh, organic agriculture and, and, in, and agriculture in general, is that food chain and food systems approaches have become more or less established in research in organic agriculture. More at least than you see in, in more conventional agricultural research. Um, another discussion uh, or question that was highlighted is the participation of farmers and also small medium enterprises uh, that in general it's not sufficiently acknowledged and addressed. But that organic agriculture research has an advantage and is better in that. Um, uh, in relation to that discussion, there was um, highlighted that are very often it's the big companies that are being approached when a voice from the private sector is needed. Um, and there was something that has to be done about that. Um, also, this issue of, of big companies not being interested in implementing um, policies, visions, how to tackle that. Uh, and the response to that or the the discussions came up with the idea that, well, it's evidence from research that is the best driver for change, and particularly related to, um, con or, or targeted at consumers, because co consumers will be the drivers of change, and big companies will have to, to follow the agenda. Um, another cross-cutting issue was the food waste. is an important issue, and uh, that is the same for conventional as organic agriculture. There's a problem in both kind of systems. Uh, sort of a final point that, that probably was not coming, <laughs> not an agreed point, but maybe a, a, a good um, final conclusion for discussion is that starting point could be the development of organic agriculture instead of trying to improve the conventional producing externalities, improving the performance in general in, in terms of ecosystem services, which also relates to the to the agreement that things has to be done differently. And I think that will be the end of the reporting from that session. Thank you very much. Thank you. And that was pretty much exactly seven minutes. <laughs> the next report will be um, from workshop two, um, EU regulatory and policy solutions for progressive organic sector development. And the uh, reporter is uh, Merit Mick. She is the executive director and senior researcher at the Center for Ecological Engineering in Estonia and uh, is a member of the board of the Estonian Organic Farming Foundation and a longtime pioneer in Estonian organic agriculture. Please. Uh, yes, second workshop. We actually had um, a very wide uh, range of issues discussed and it is uh, not too easy to make uh, conclusions. But uh, I think that it was really cl clear for all, from uh, all the participants that, uh, uh, that we have been concentrating maybe too much and or we have used our um, brain power too much to the regulatory issues uh, and uh, uh, we have um, uh, we have forgotten that uh, these regulatory issues uh, are uh, not really the, the, uh, the main tool uh, to develop the organic farming uh, uh, sector. Uh, uh, so um, uh, uh, we have 
uh, here are the listed the main topics uh, which this, uh, we discussed, but, uh, uh, but actually the, I think there are at least 10 other ones missing <laughs> from here. Uh, but um, uh, there was a lot of um, uh, di uh, discussion that, um, uh, about the stakeholder involvement, uh, for example, and uh, uh, that uh, about the participatory uh, approach, uh, then uh, bringing uh, producers and uh, consumers and, uh, together. Uh, uh, then that we have to, uh, to look, uh, we have to go from the niche tools to transformative tools. Uh, uh, we have to um, um, empower uh, farmers worldwide. Uh, and we have to pay uh, much more attention to the uh, young generation involvement. Uh, also, uh, and the, the engagement of the, of the new farmers uh, uh, in farming, not only organic farming, but, uh, but also in general, and uh, uh, about the responsibilities. And um, uh, here are the um, uh, main conclusions uh, from, from our workshop. Uh, uh, the, the first one I already already mentioned that we have to, um, in order to move forward, uh, forward, and uh, uh, we have to use all available tools. Uh, uh, we shouldn't concentrate just to the to the regulation and uh, and to the um, policy uh, support um, measures, but we have to look uh, for the market incentive. We have to uh, pay much more attention to the private sector involvement, uh, uh, and so on. Mm. Uh, then another topic uh, we had um, uh, discussion was um, the solutions. Mm. that all the solutions um, mm, are uh, subject to the global uh, uh, economical, political and social realities. Uh, and we have to work on this basis. And sometimes it seems that we are, uh, we are forgetting, uh, forgetting it in, the, in, the, in, the, in our work. Uh, we uh, discussed about, uh, under the, the, this topic, we discussed uh, about the import um, uh, regimes. Uh, but it was several times uh, also uh, stressed uh, that um, in order to, um, uh, to, uh, to work globally and to develop the organic farming outside of EU, uh, we have to uh, help uh, the developing countries uh, to uh, uh, develop their own markets rather than just concentrate to the uh, export uh, to uh, EO, EU or, or US. Uh, then uh, the third uh, conclusion is that we need to create policy environment based on true costs. Um, and we have to move away from, uh, from the business as usual. Uh, I think this is, this is very commonly known. Everybody of, of you is probably thinking about the, uh, about the real cost of the food and, what, uh, and uh, what, what is the actual cost of the, uh, of the cheap food of the, uh, in, in, our, in our shops. Um, uh, and, um, uh, we, um, uh, and this, is, this point is, of course, uh, uh, from one uh, hand, it is related uh, to, the, uh, to the existing uh, um, uh, policy, uh, policy tools and policy uh, support or the support systems, uh, which are still um, uh, uh, are supporting the, the farming, uh, which is, um, uh, which is uh, 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 business as usual. And from the other side, of course, we have to um, think about um, uh, the, the fact uh, that uh, 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 when everybody is talking about a polluter-based principle, for example, then if we are coming really to the, uh, to the, to the real situation, uh, then, uh, th this, uh, uh, then there is very little attention paid to this. And uh, uh, a lot of organic farmers, for example, they are really um, uh, affected by their um, uh, uh, conventional uh, uh, neighbors, and these conventional neighbors, uh, uh, they don't uh, uh, have any responsibility for the, for the polluted organic fields, uh, as well as for the, uh, for the, um, for the environmental 
uh, aspects. Uh, then the fourth one, uh, we had, uh, I think, a lot of uh, uh, discussion about um, uh, wider stakeholder uh, involvement, uh, that this is really uh, crucial in solving the problems and, uh, uh, and also the finding the best uh, uh, solutions. And that uh, there should be much more attention paid to the um, uh, uh, participatory strategies. Uh, so there is, uh, it's not only the, the, um, the need for, the, for the just the formal uh, uh, stakeholder involvement, but do we really uh, need um, uh, 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 different uh, uh, methods to be used, uh, and we need really the, uh, to, uh, to use the right uh, uh, strategies in, the, in, the, in solving the, 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 the problems. Uh, so, uh, I think that, for example, uh, as, uh, if we are talking about uh, European uh, Organic Farming Action Plan, and we are talking about uh, a few activities there, um, for example, uh, the um, uh, support, um, uh, uh, supporting uh, uh, um, the uh, so the farmers to, 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 understand, uh, to understand about um, uh, the, uh, the appropriate policy tools, uh, then uh, uh, the wider involvement of the people from sector would uh, make this um, uh, uh, measure and these activities much more uh, uh, effective. And then as a, um, as a last, last point here, but maybe the most important point, uh, is that, um, that everybody uh, has their own responsibility um, in developing the solutions. And as um, uh, Chris, as a first, uh, first speaker in our session, uh, mentioned that we have to look at first our, to, at ourselves in order to develop the organic far farmer, uh, farming sector, and we just, uh, we don't need to um, uh, uh, to uh, uh, look first at the uh, regulatory side and uh, at the policy side, but, uh, 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 but as, a, as a priority to look at uh, uh, ourselves, uh, what, we can, uh, what we can do, and uh, then work together with the policy makers to determine it. Uh, determine it. Determ that term, I can't pronounce this, sorry, that term, uh, uh, the right uh, solutions. Thanks. Thank you, Merit. And uh, then we uh, take as the third rapporteur workshop number one, uh, organic regulation towards a final agreement, and the rapporteur is uh, Marianne Blum. Uh, she works as regulation officer in Bionext, which is the umbrella organization for the organic sector in the Netherlands, and she is also the uh, Dutch board member in IFOM EU. So please. Thank you. Dutch council member. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Um, is my presentation on here? So, I had an interesting workshop to report on, and I promised myself I would never do it again, because <laughs> it was so hard to summarize it. And I, although I have no conclusions, I will say that from the beginning. We talked about trousers, we talked about trains, we talked about poison, I will come back to that. And there were many different topics on the table. Um, I tried to thematize, to put them in order of different um, thematic areas. So, at the table or at the workshop, I'd like to say before, there were all the relevant parties around. There was the current and the next presidency of the council, there was um, the commission, there was the parliament, and there was the sector, which was very good. But it also meant that there were no common statements, there were individual statements. Um, so we talked about annual controls, about imports, about thresholds, the three hot topics that are now on the table. 
we talked about the next steps in the progress in the process about delegated versus implementing X and how to get smallholders on board or how to simplify the current regulation. Well, first on the annual controls, um, it's now the, the latest version is that there is an annual control as the basic rule, but you can apply as a member state risk-based inspection and have a physical control once every three years. There were an enormous amount of questions from the room. Which, um, and it seemed as if everybody in the room would like to have this every year physical control. But there was a very clear answer from the current presidency and the new president from Luxembourg. Like in the council discussions, it's more balanced. There are quite a lot of member states that are in favor of risk-based controls. So that was very interesting. So the compromise that it's on the table, it's really a compromise between the different voices that are heard in the council discussions. Then on the imports, um, there was currently there is the equivalence and the proposal is to have compliance and equivalence only for trade agreements. And one of the criticisms from the room was that um, there, is, there are already many regulations to deal with at the moment and even a compromise that is offered now will completely overload the capacity of the, com the commission. And I really liked <laughs> the answer of uh, the Commission saying, yeah, we are now busy with this regulation. If we have finished this regulation, we can put energy on sorting out the import rules and sorting out, and then we put energy on it, uh, and then we will have that solved too. Uh, and Mr. Hausling from the Parliament clearly stated that he sees as one of the main um, problems in the current regulation, this import issue. He says it's not regulated very well, and I'm not sure if we can wait another year or another two or three years to solve that issue. We have to solve it now. So on thresholds. There, Mr. Hausling made a very clear statement. Thresholds for pesticides it's not a problem of the organic sector, it's a problem of the conventional sector. And he gave an example that the, in Parliament they are working now on rules around uh, the use of Roundup in conventional farming. Whereas from the Council, no, sorry, from the Commission, he gave a different picture. He says, now there are in the Council, there uh, is a narrow majority of member states that has no threshold now. There is an important minority that has rules on thresholds for pesticides. Um, do we want the majority to impose their rules on the minority? And the council is finding a way in between. So he presented it as a very balanced approach. Whereas the sector, Mr. Plugger clearly stated a mixed approach on thresholds will not work. On the next steps in the, pro in the process, of course, uh, Mrs. Faber from the Luxembourg new presidency was asked and she clearly stated that to work on the organic regulation is clearly a priority for their presidency. I think that's a very positive statement. And she is very optimistic that she, um, or she would like to try and finish the trialogues um, try to finish the trilogue speaker before the end of their um, presidency. How much time do I still have? It's okay? Okay. So on the, the delegated versus the implementing X, that was a, a question how would um, Mr. Kango Fano from the council see this this effort that is put in getting out all the uh, delegated acts that were in the original proposal. 
and he said very clearly, it's not a religion for me, it's not a principal thing, but you have to consider, you have a price to pay. If you put things out of delegated X, and you put them in the basic X, don't come complaining to me after two years that you want to change something, and we have to say, you have to change the basic X. So you have to go through a whole difficult process, a whole, because changing the basic X is something different than arranging it through a delegated act. So actually he gave us a warning. And yeah, and then the last one was a question from the moderator, uh, Andrea Ferrante, to the people that were sitting there. What have you done to simplify the regulation? What are your proposals to keep the smallholders or to get the smallholders on board? of the organic sector and to simplify the rules. Well, from the Latvian presidency, it was clear that we have secured the mixed farming, which is, can be very positive for people having different operations to join organic. We have the group certification, um, which is an important tool and the very, and also many things can be regulated in the more detailed production rules and they are open to be discussed after this process. Because we only talk about general production rules now. And to finalize, the conclusions which are no, they are not real conclusions. So. I made a mistake here. It's first, the commission said, we need new pens. That was a very important statement, meaning, the old pens don't fit anymore. We need new, a new regulation. So that's, and they stick to that. It also means no withdrawal. We will not put it back. Maybe we had a chance to put it back. We will not put it back, this, this proposal. We will go on. The presidency, and I used the metaphor that Jan Plager used, but it, it fitted well to the presidency and the council. The train will not stop. We will go on with it. But we are working, we are keeping everybody on board with making these compromises. Mr. Housling from the Parliament, he had not such a nice metaphor, but he had a good statement. He said, we are not talking about a niche, we are talking about the future of farming, which I like. And then the sector, Mr. Plager from Bieland said, there are many things, uh, it, it was a bigger example, but this political process, it's like a cocktail where you have the different ingredients. And the ingredients are not right. And we try to get the ingredients better. Maybe it's not perfect, but in the end, on Tuesday, we want a cocktail. It may not be tasty, but at least we do not want to be poisoned. I think that's quite relevant for the sector. So with this, I conclude my report. Thank you, Marianne. Uh, I think if you don't want to be a rapporteur, you shouldn't do so good reports. <laughs> I'm sure you will be a rapporteur. It costed me my lunch. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, now we will open uh, the discussion. And uh, I think um, there is a lot of uh, food for thought. Uh, in the reports and in the discussions you have all participated, so we'll, uh, I think we'll take, um, um, uh, uh, if uh, anybody wants to comment on the, on the reports or wants to add something, if maybe the moderators of the workshops uh, want to add something. Unfortunately, Lisa Andresen had, uh, had another meeting, she had to leave, but, uh, but maybe the uh, moderator of the third group was Marco, is he in here? Uh, okay, uh, because the rapporteur has left, so I thought maybe if there's a question coming to the third group, so you can you can take it. But so please, uh, hands up if you have any comments or questions. If not. Um, <clears throat> Maybe um, 
we take some, we force some uh, comments from. The I think we have some ten, ten minutes anyway for the um, discussion. Five minutes, okay. Um, no questions? There's one, okay. Uh, we don't want to leave these five minutes unused. Uh, please introduce. Uh, I, I'm Anchi Kaling from Demeter, and I just wanted to repeat, I think it has been said several times, Yes, maybe we need new pants, but if we want to buy new pants, if we, want to, if we need to buy them, then we want to be sure that they fit better than the old pants. And um, I think this is really a conclusion of the whole Congress as far as it has, has been uh, discussed now, that um, of course uh, we are not completely against working on this regulation. We showed all our will to work on the regulation, but we really need a regulation that fits, that fits to the sector and that also fits to those outside Europe who want to bring their products inside Europe. So we also have to think about the imports. And yeah, I think that's just another appeal to really don't uh, work with this compromise, but take some more time to work on a better text. Thank you. Any more comments? Or questions? Uh, here? Uh, uh, okay, back there. Mm. My name is Lars Mosul. I am a member of Organic Farming Association in Latvia. Uh, I wanted to comment uh, on the third workshop uh, relating to food security and organic farming, how, how organic farming can support food security. And I would like to say that we need another food systems and not another farming. So we have to discuss about how another food systems can support uh, food security. Okay, thank you for the comment. I am Eva Ach, uh, from Hungary. Uh, I would like to give my personal summary of uh, this whole day uh, meeting, listening to uh, decision to the mem members of the decision making boards. Uh, I have heard uh, many times that uh, uh, it should we should find a compromise next week because we have invested so much work, but I think it is uh, we have to consider what has happened really I think really a lot of work and a lot of money was invested into this process but the main problem was that it shouldn't be started and uh, the other problem is that the original text was uh, absolutely uh, uh, bad and that's why it needed so big efforts to turn into a, a, a at least better better position and uh, I would like to ask everybody uh, who is taking part in the process and uh, taking part in the next week uh, uh, decision or at least the preparation of it to consider that uh, out of the different personal uh, considerations and out of the different political considerations only one uh, very clear goal should lead uh, uh, the decision makers uh, to make uh, a, a sure future for organic farming and organic consumption. And this should be the very clear uh, goal. And I don't think it is a problem if it is not, ex uh, not accepted, no. And if there is no uh, compromise, it will mean that uh, somehow the whole thing not, is not on the right track but we have to stand on the basis of the existing regulation, so we are not lost if it won't be accepted, but we, because we, we still consider that the existing regulation is uh, well working, it was uh, accepted on a, on a very strong base, and if it needs uh, uh, renewal or uh, some changes, it can be done. So I would like to ask everybody who is uh, deciding to be brave enough to turn away from this very, very 
uh, negative uh, process and think about the future of organic farming and farmers. Thank you. Thank you, and um, thank you for all the comments.